Welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast, where we discuss dynasty strategy, rankings, and all things NFL. So get ready to geek out on fantasy football with your host, Rich Dotson. And welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast. I am your host, Rich Dotson, here my fellow nerd, Garrett Price. How's it going? Oh, it's going swell. We're still without our good friend, Matt O'Hara. Matt O'Hara is still sick. Uh, back at home, I hope he feels better well and uh, gets out from what he has going on there. So we'll hopefully we'll see him here next week. But, you know, we're here to cover NFL week one from the dynasty perspective because that's what we do. Week one is already in the book, Garrett, uh, which is crazy. And it, it's why we have to enjoy every single week of fantasy football and NFL season because it's over in the blink of eye, uh, an eye. You know, as older we get, we all say the same thing. Like, wow, I can't believe how time just flies by, but the NFL season flies by even quicker. Here we are week one. We're going to blink and we're going to be starting the playoffs here in week. What is that? 15 this year. Oh, I love the extra week of play fantasy football. Thank you. So we got a lot to cover. We got some injuries to cover. We got some news to cover. We got some rookies to talk about in the nerd herd episode. We changed that format as well for the nerd herd. Every week go for the fantasy football season. We're going to talk about players that we think you should buy and players you should sell every single week from that week's perspective. But before getting to all this great dynasty talk, let me tell you about our friends over at Thrive Fantasy. Dot com. That's right. You can come prop up on Thrive Fantasy this fantasy football season. With Thrive, you can eliminate countless hours of research and focus on only the top tier athletes that have the biggest impact on the game. You get to choose 10 out of 20 available player props to build your lineup. And what these props are, props are they give you 20 players to say, hey, will, will Deshaun Watson have over a half a yard or under a half a yard? Will he most die in one minute or not die in one minute? Those aren't real props, but it's going to come down to, hey, will Nick Chubb have a touchdown? Will will um, Lamar Jackson rush for over 60 yards or under 60 yards? And all these props come with point values, and you pick your 10 favorites. And at the end, whoever has the most points gets the most money. And when you hit the props and you rack up the most points to win a share of the prize pool, Thrive features right now over $100,000 guaranteed uh, contest, and it costs $20 to enter. And first place brings home $20,000. This is a website that's given up tons of money, over millions of dollars in prize already. And right now you get on Thrive Fantasy and make your prop peps, prop bets using a promo code NERDS. When you sign up today and you're going to 100% instant first deposit match up to $100 with that promo code NERDS. So get out there. Download Thrive Fantasy on the App Store or Play Store by visiting their, by visiting their website, www.thrivefantasy.com. That's thrivefantasy.com. Sign up and prop up today. So, Garrett, as we always do, the start of these shows, uh, as bad as it is, I know in the preseason we lost those three talented young running backs. Yeah. We got to talk about some injuries here to start out the show, which we do every week. I don't think there's ever been a week we're going, hey, hey, look at this. Everybody's hunky-dory. Good. Good for you guys eating your uh, Wheaties out there or Nick Chubb crunchies. I, I hear you, but this could this could be a lot worse. We've had a lot of week ones where right off the bat we're missing a ton of stars. And you mentioned it beforehand, uh, you know, we had those three guys go out early. So that definitely uh, makes up for it. But week one stings a little for some players, but most of the main stars have stayed pretty safe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we pretty much stubbed our toe. We didn't get bit by a uh, dinosaur here. So... Uh, let's look at some of these injuries. Jerry Judy has that high ankle spr sprain. They put him on IR. Uh, so he's going to be out for at least three weeks. Should be anywhere from four to six weeks for the high ankle sprain. Do you think this opens uh, a buy window for Jerry Judy? Because Jerry Judy was kind of a really hot name. This whole training camp lead up to the season. We loved him as a rookie coming out. We loved his route running. Uh, there's been some hype. He, he looked good in the preseason. Looked good before he got hurt even. Super talented route runner. Now it's going to open the door for maybe KJ Hamler. Maybe you have Tim Patrick on your roster, Cortland Sutton, who had a doo-doo game. But, you know, when you have the ACL injury, you're coming back. you got to be cautious with those players because they always don't overly perform week one. Would you use this window? Because Dynasty is always about a game of buy-in windows, right? Is right. this a buy-in window for Jerry Judy now that he's going to miss the next six six weeks? Or do you wait, like, next till next week and let it settle down a little bit to buy Jerry Judy? I might wait a week or two, uh, so it's not as obvious that I'm attempting to buy low, but I'm definitely buying Jerry Judy. You mentioned it. 
at the beginning of the game, he looked really good. He only played for part of the game, but still hauled in six catches over 60 yards. Watching some of his route running, I mean, he was he was putting on a clinic out there. Looks much more comfortable already in season two, but it, it is going to be unfortunate that we're going to miss some time. And those high uncle sprains tend to linger a little bit. So we'll, we'll see how fresh he is when he comes back or if he's a little rusty and there's a little bit of a hindrance still with that high ankle sprain. But long term, he looks good. If Teddy Bridgewater continues to play like he did this past week, he played very well, one of the highest QBRs in the league in week one. It could be a nice matchup. So I am still buying Jerry Judy. Yeah, this, if any teams out there kind of relying on Jerry Judy for some help uh, going into this season, if you have a receiver that you can offer uh, that offers upside, and a first round pick for Jerry Judy. That's a trade I'm making all day. Uh, I would love to make those kind of offers for Judy here. Maybe even starting this week, Garrett, where like, hey, uh, I know you lost Judy. You need a receiver. Uh, here's Julio Jones in a first for Jerry Judy. We yeah, that I would have no problem with that. Yeah, me neither. Another person got hurt, and that was Ryan Fitzpatrick. Ah. Hurts my heart to see it. You know, every time this guy gets an opportunity, something just happens. Now he has this hip uh, subluxation which has got to be something with the hip because it starts with the word hip. What sure. subluxation means, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to say it around my kids because they're too young for that kind of language, so I'm not going to use that language around them. He's on LR. Brings in Taylor, Taylor Heineke here. Uh, Heineke. Heineke, Heineke, Mr. Hanky, don't poo on me. Uh, do you think, what do you, what do you think of this situation here in Washington? Cause there's a lot that's going on right now. They could trade for Deshaun Watson. They could bring in Cam Newton, who knows Ron Rivera pretty well. Cause he's yeah. homeless right now when it comes to fancy uh, NFL jobs. Or do you think this is Heineke's job to come in here and just heavily target Logan Thomas and Terry McLaurin who made an absolutely prob to me that DeAndre Hopkins Hopkins catch and that Terry McLaurin catch where he made on the sideline yeah. where he had to spin around and come back to the ball and still get the ball in bounds, which was absolutely gorgeous. Uh, was a beautiful catch. What do you think about here in Washington in the QB situation, uh, which is going to affect super flex leagues? Yeah, it's, it's definitely unfortunate. This was a, a situation that we thought was going to be this high flying offense. We knew Ryan Fitzpatrick loves to sling the ball down the field, get a bunch of players involved, but Unfortunately, at this point, it doesn't look like that's going to happen anytime soon. Heineke is not going to be a guy that's going to make a ton of big throws down the field, but he is pretty accurate. And we saw at the beginning of the game, Logan Thomas really wasn't involved as much as we would have expected. Obviously, super small sample size, but basically all of his action, his three catches for 30 yards and a touchdown, all came while Tyler Heineke was in there. And so I think that's what we need to look for is maybe uh, Thomas being what we expected or maybe even slightly better, but I do worry about some of the down the field threats guys like uh, Diami Brown and uh, maybe even to some extent, some of the big plays for Terry McLaurin, but he's so talented. He's going to figure out how to win other ways. It just might not be as many big long passes down the field. Well, Heidi Ho, Mr. Heineke, Raheem Moster can't go five seconds without getting hurt. Uh, already out for the season. I mean, bye. Raheem Moster has, uh, branded himself as somebody that just super talented, super fast, but just can't last, you know, a couple games. And this time he can't even last a couple quarters. He's out knee injury announced it today on uh, his, his Twitter account, which is going to open the door. Obviously Elijah Mitchell. We're going to talk about him honestly in both shows. We got a lot to talk about Elijah Mitchell. We won't dive into him as much today. Uh, or on this show as we will the nerd herd episode, but yeah, I mean, he comes in, has a fantastic game, uh, yeah. for the San Francisco 49ers. Obviously Trey Sermon's not even active, but it just goes to show. I mean, we talked about this before. Like if you're just given the opportunity in San Francisco, you're going to be a fancy football relevant running back. It, it's kind of why I said in this off season, I was like, why pay that price for Trey Sermon when you could pay this price for Elijah Mitchell. And yep. if you were to listen to that and I have a lot of Elijah Mitchell shares, you would have had him already for week one. Now, obviously, you didn't start Elijah Mitchell week one, so it's kind of relevant. And Trey Sermon's probably going to be active week two, but Elijah Mitchell just to have a really good game, and Kyle Shanahan will ride the hot hand. So that's that's an interesting situation. Raheem Mostert, what is he worth right now? Is he worth a bagel? Is he worth uh, a fifth round pick? Is he worth a, a, a firm handshake? I mean, sure, fifth round pick, I guess. You're just throwing. I mean. It's, it's basically the same type of dart as a fifth round pick. But at this point, you, you can't count on him to stay healthy. He's not young. It's not like he broke out as a rookie or a second year player. 
He's in his late 20s already at this point. I just don't see a situation where he comes back and is given the 1A job. So I, I don't see I don't see why. I, I mean, he's borderline not roster, rosterable at this point. Obviously, you have IR, IR slots. Yeah. So you can stick him in there. But yeah, maybe a fifth, but that's it. Yeah, that's it for most of my eyes, too. I agree with you. He'll get a job. He'll be a backup guy, but he'll never be another guy again. And if he does come back, I mean, what are you going to do? Like you said, you can't count on him. You can't even count the one to get usage out of this guy. You're like, all right, let's go, Raheem. What? what? And that's uh, it. It's over. Dang. I'm finished. It's like it's like the worst. Like, it, uh, Never mind. I don't want to get into that part of my uh, life uh, for how quick things can go downhill. <laughs> let's move on. Rashad Penny, calf strain out two to six weeks. Uh yeah, Rashad Penny, he's still around in the NFL, former first-round pick. People thought he was going to get a little bump into value. Still the Chris Carson show there. Your boy DJ Dallas now has a little bit more opportunity out there. Yes, sir. Rashad Penny, is he rosterable? I mean, he's he's about in the same boat as most. They're another guy that just can't stay healthy. Yes, there's there's talent there, and I guess he's younger than most, so that helps a little bit. But he just, he just can't stay on the field. So we'll see about this calf strain. Uh, right now, it's looking like it's week to week, but who knows with him? Everything always seems to last a lot longer than it's supposed to. I just can't. I just can't trust the guy. And and Carson just keeps producing. I don't know why at this point they would bother even attempting to put him in when when Carson's playing so well. Yeah. So DJ Dallas has the door open. So let's talk about someone who's not a turd Ferguson. Michael Gallup. Uh, he strains his calf. He's out three to five weeks, which hurts. But does this open the door for Wilson here at wide receiver in Dallas, who had a really good game uh, that Thursday night football? He looked really good in Gallup's uh, place. This is a person that might now for how many times they're going to throw the football there in Dallas, which obviously looks like 50,000 attempts uh, for Dak Prescott this year. Does this give Wilson flex potential there in Dallas? It's a possibility, but what I think it does even more so is it makes their tight ends more streaming valuable uh, because the biggest issue was they were basically splitting between Schultz and Blake Jarwin. I think this gives the two of them combined more targets, even if it's just two or three more targets a game in total. Now, all of a sudden, a guy like Schultz that might only get four catches now might get five or six, or Jarwin, who might have only gotten three, gets four or five. And so I think that makes them more valuable as a, ah, shoot, my tight end's on bye week, or, oh, shoot, my tight end got hurt. You could plug one of them in and still hope to get seven, eight points out of them, as opposed to before where it, it just really felt like such a dart throw. I think I think they're the biggest beneficiary. I don't know that I quite trust Wilson enough yet to be able to be that wide receiver three on the team and be good enough to be in my starting lineup at any point. Yeah, C. Lamb and Mark, you were going to absolutely devour those fancy points. Uh, most likely, Combo will probably be locked in as wire, two wide receiver ones this year will be C. Lamb and Amari Cooper. And, and then Zach Ertz has a hamstring uh, strain. He's week to week. Dallas Goddard's still the main guy there at the tight end position. And Devontae Smith, we'll talk about here shortly. Uh, and we'll talk about right now, actually, we're going to not just him specifically, but let's get into our rookie check in for week one, shall we? Let's talk about some of these NFL rookies. They all had their debut. This week, let's start off at the top here with the running back, and that is Najee Harris. 16 attempts for 45 yards. He did three C3 three targets, had one reception for four lines. And it, the, no surprise the most, uh, the Steelers came away with that W, but you know it, it came with a big special teams touchdown that Deontay Johnson touched on the end. Big Ben didn't look overly great, but that offensive line looks absolutely horrendous. I know Rich Rebar put a good tweet out there. I don't know if you have that in front of you. Uh, or, or not, but I mean, Najee, the biggest concern came to fruition, and that is a very talented running back behind an abysmal offensive line. Yeah, that was something that I remember talking about in, in my concerns uh, this year with with the, the Pittsburgh Steelers and specifically Najee Harris was just how bad this run offensive line is. They got rid of some of their, their best players and David DeCastro and Pouncey retired, and I know that they were towards the end of their careers, and even Villanueva looked terrible against uh, Baltimore or with, for Baltimore last night. But they replaced him with guys like Trey Turner, who was just, who was one of the worst-rated PFF guys. You mentioned um, that tweet. Uh, said Najee Harris currently sits as the RB41 in PPR formats with the nice game to go. If anyone pass on him, that would be the lowest scoring finish by a running back playing 100% of the snaps since 2012. So, uh, And that was going to be something I brought up was 
the 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 light at the end of the tunnel is he is the guy. Like he, he's going to get the touches, he's going to get the carries, and that's why that's why I didn't end up having him uh, as as a. I don't remember if I ended up putting him officially as an RB one or not, but I, I remember talking about him as a guy that I was really nervous about, and it really mostly came down to the offensive line because I I just wasn't sure that he would be effective enough. The floor is safe. He's going to still get you 13 points or so most weeks. Obviously not this one, but most weeks you could still count on 12 to 13 points just because of the passing volume combined with the rushing volume. But this week it, it looked rough and it definitely has me a little more worried even than I was before at this point for Najee Harris. Well, the good thing is most offensive lines gel as the season goes sure. along and they do get a little bit better. Uh, I expect Najee's uh, reception passing games and PPRs to, to go up, which should help him. But I'm with you. I, I still think we're going to see that, that 13 point games right around there on the floor, which again, we saw Mike Davis was good enough. His, he averaged about 13.1 points a game last year. And that was good enough for running back 12 overall. And, and, and you mentioned that usage, a hundred percent snap total for a running back. Wild which is crazy. So look for the Steelers to ride Najee Harris, which is going to be the best thing you can ask for for any running back is a little consistency. Obviously, obviously it didn't come up through week one, but Buffalo's got a good solid defense there too. I think Najee Harris will be just fine this year and has a high chance to still finish as a running back one. One, one uh, compliment Javante real Williams. quick. One compliment yeah. I do want to give him. The beginning part of the game, he looked real tentative watching him play. He wasn't hitting those holes real hard. But as the game went on, as he got more comfortable, you could tell he was running stronger. He was running more powerful, more confident. So there could be part of that, too, is just it's these guys first games. You know, we saw that for the first eight games out of Jonathan Taylor last year. You know, we saw this. Yeah. We see this at times cool. out of rookies, too. So I don't want to blame it entirely on the offensive line. I think he was just tentative early and he got better as he went. That should probably help just a little more experience under his belt as we get to weeks three, four, five. I mean, he was hit behind the line of scrimmage a lot on almost every single run. It was, I mean, you could argue they're the worst offensive line in all of football. It's that bad. I mean, they looked and it looked, it looked at the problem is it looked all that. It looked that bad in camp. It looked that bad in preseason and it looked just as bad in week one. So yeah. that is a situation that's not good for Ben Roethlisberger. It's not good for Najee Harris, and it's it has a chance that you know it could hurt these wide receivers, which we saw none of them really had a huge game. Deontay Johnson that game at the end, uh, that touched on the end, but Pittsburgh that's that's worrisome. The offensive line is that bad, where it's a huge worrisome when it comes to fantasy football production. I think if I have those receivers, I'm treading lightly and I'm selling Juju for. I'm like we mentioned him before as a sell. Like, oh yeah, he's been a sell. If for I could a while. sell Juju still on that name take, say somebody had Jerry Judy and I could and I could swap. We mentioned him before. Can I swap Juju Smith Schuster for Jerry Judy straight up? Ah, uh, no, I don't want to do that. Hey, what if I give you Juju Smith Schuster in a second for Jerry Judy? Like, I am actively trying to pawn off, and I think Jerry, I think Jerry Judy is a great get right now. Sure. Um, for a guy like Juju Smith Schuster, I think he has the cat, the cachet in name and the fact that he finishes wide receiver 16 overall last year. I think that's enough that could possibly get that deal done or it's workable unless you're sure. just a huge Juju hater, kind of like I am, which is sorry, Juju. I'll hit you up on my TikTok next time. Uh, let's move on to Javante Williams running back for the Denver Broncos, 14 attempts, 45 yards. He's competed with Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon obviously had a much better game. He saw Javante sell one target, one reception for minus four yards. It's a pretty even slit, uh, split, but we, we look at uh, Melvin Gordon had that big touchdown run for 70 yards, which was massive. I thought Melvin Gordon was going to get 60% of the shares. It was pretty even down the road, but Melvin Gordon showed with that, that veteran presence that he's still a factor here in fantasy football. Had over 20 yeah. fantasy football points. I know that big run, you know, that's a big run, so that that's a huge part of his points, but he still had the big run. What do you think about Javante Williams? Are you excited about his usage so early being a 50-50 split? Yeah, I was I was actually very encouraged. I know 45 yards is nothing to get too excited about. It's, you know, a pretty meh effort uh, overall, but the fact that, you know, he had he had 14 attempts to to Melvin Gordon's 11. Melvin Gordon was used slightly more in the passing game, so overall it was pretty even. Uh, I did. I didn't expect that to be the case. I thought so you said you mentioned sixty percent. I thought it could even be as high as seventy percent in Melvin Gordon's favor early on, uh, because I thought the first five, six, seven weeks or so were going to be mostly Melvin Gordon as they transition. So the fact that it's this even of a split uh, this early 
is very encouraging for me uh, overall. So I'm excited about what I saw out of Javante Williams. And, and similar to Najee, first few runs, he looked a little tentative. As the game went on, you could tell he got more comfortable, started ripping off some longer runs, some eight-yard runs, some 12-yard runs, things like that. So I, I got a little more excited as the game went on to seeing him get more comfortable in the offense. Yeah, as all these young guys go, he's just going to boost his dynasty value here uh, in the game. It, it, but I do ex- I, I'm going to say this. I still expect it to be his timeshare all the way through. Like, I don't think at any point they bench Melvin Gordon. He's the backup running back. Uh, you know, it's a 70-40 the other way. I think going for this entire season, it will be a pretty even split for what they're paying Melvin Gordon and how talented he is. So I think that does handicap Javante, unless he could somehow get more involved in a passing game, which we know he can do. But remember, it was Michael Carter who was more involved in a passing game there for UNC. So well, it's actually, surprisingly, Javante Williams actually had two more catches or three more catches than Michael Carter. So, oh, you know what? Now that you mentioned that, I do. Because it was weird. Michael Carter actually had like a few more rushing attempts, which didn't make sense. So it was kind of opposite of what you would have expected out of those two. Javante Williams, very talented running back. I, I think his value is going to come come playoff time, yep. not early on. So it's, it's, it's a, but hey, the, again, we got to be excited just about the usage out the gate. That's so, the I mean, most important thing. Javante was slightly used a little bit more in the ground game. So that, that that's a good start to the, to the season. We mentioned Elijah Mitchell earlier for the San Francisco 49ers. What a game, 19 attempts, yeah. 104 yards and a touchdown. Like we mentioned, Trey Sermon was not active. We're going to talk about Trey Sermon. Is he a buy or is he sell? I don't want to ruin for the nerd episode, but we're going to talk about him in depth here for the nerd episode, whether we should be buying Elijah Mitchell or should we should be selling Elijah Mitchell. I have my stance, but Trey Sermon will be coming back. I want to, I'll say this is whoever is the guy for the San Francisco 49ers is going to score you fancy football points. Fair? There you go. Fair. Yeah, let's talk about him death here soon. Another running back, Kenneth Gainwell for the Philadelphia Eagles, nine attempts, 37 yards, and a touchdown. Saw three targets, two receptions, six yards. He was definitely more involved in the passing game than said uh, starter, Miles Sanders, who had a pretty solid game for... He did. Not, I mean, almost disappearing there in the second quarter. Like, he wasn't even... <laughs> like, hey, where'd yeah. you go? Oh, there he is. Ended up having a very solid game. Looked pretty good overall. The Eagles looked pretty solid in offense. Yeah. But Kenneth Gainwell is really carving himself out a role here for the Philadelphia Eagles. Like the young rookie out of Memphis, will will he be a possible? Is there a chance that he could come on like the newly paid Naheem Hines for the Philadelphia Eagles? Could he be that kind of weapons? Which we got to remember, Naheem Hines finished as running back number 16 in PPR leagues last year. We're always looking guys like J.D. McKissick for Washington last year. Those guys hold value. Is there value going on right now, Garrett, Kenneth Gainwell in Philadelphia? Is now the time to buy in Dynasty? Is there value in PPR leagues for the former Memphis Tiger? I think so. He came into the season or into the draft process as my number four, I believe, four or five. I I have to go back and look. He was either my fourth or fifth ranked running back in the class. I really liked his tape. Uh, Watching him in the passing game, that was one of the things that he did the best was he could line up as a receiver and and catch passes. He was also very good out of the backfield, had pretty good speed. So I was a big fan of his, and I was surprised when he fell as late as he did in the draft. It was one of those things where I thought for sure he was going to be a third round running back. And he ended up going to didn't go till the fifth. Then you had Miles Sanders and, and Boston Scott, which I thought Boston Scott was one of the biggest hindrances for his playing time. And Boston Scott didn't hit the box score. Like it was it was all Kenneth Gainwell and Miles Sanders. So that was extremely encouraging for me. And I, unless you've heard something about an injury to Boston Scott that I'm not aware of, I think he was just better. And they're like, you know what? We're going to use this young guy. We can do it in the receiving game. We even trust him uh, on the ground. I, I mean, nine, nine attempts for a guy that's more of the receiving back is nothing to sneeze at. So I think he is a good sneaky value and he could easily be you're right. Naheem Hines, Tony Pollard, some of these guys that are still going to have value even though they're not their team's main ball carrier. Yeah. And again, that was my first thought of when you're looking for somebody who's going to be um, from that standpoint, like a talent, where, where can he be used? Where, where can that fantasy production come from? 
and I mentioned, I, I tweeted out earlier, like Naheem Hines to me was one of my favorite off season buys, right? Like I did a whole YouTube video. I know it's on YouTube right now, the Dynasty Nerds YouTube channel, why you should buy Naheem Hines. I put this out seven months ago. Then he goes out and he gets paid. He's Naheem Hines is the 11th highest paid running back in the NFL right now. And when you look at that same thing, so you look at Gainwell, nine attempts, 37 yards, three targets, two receptions, six yards. Obviously the touchdown is a big thing. Going out there, Jonathan Taylor had a fantastic game for the Colts. But Naeem Hines for the Colts uh, versus Seahawks, nine attempts, 34 yards, right? In the passing game, eight targets, six receptions, 48 yards. So Naeem Hines got that six receptions, 48 points. That's, so that's 10.8 points there. Add on to the uh, r- rushing yards, which is 3.34, which is 3.4. You're talking about a 14-point game for Naeem Hines, which is more points, again, than running back 12, Mike Davis, last year. So if Kenneth Gainwell can get into that mold and become that running back where he's getting about nine, 10 temps a game, but more so the action and the juice will be on. He saw three targets. Can he get into that eight target range right around Hines as well? Then he becomes a factor in fantasy football. And the reason I did that video on Naheem Hines is this is where the value is in dynasty fantasy football. We talk about it all the time on the show is everybody's looking for that big trade, but it's the small trades that win you ships as well. And that's why I love Naheem Hines. And I've been talking about him for over a year. I think Kenneth Gainwell Garrett has a chance to fit into this mold. I think he's a fantastic dynasty buy right now. And I would be more than happy to give up a 22 second for Kenneth Gainwell now, which Again, some might say, hey, that's an overpay. But when we're talking in 2023, you're like, wow, I can't believe you got Kenneth Gainwell for a second. Because right now, I think Naheem Hines, before that uh, contract session, was easily worth a second. Now that he's getting paid, he has that long-term commitment right. from the Colts. Right. I think that's easy worth a second. Why not? Why pay that Naheem Hines price? when you get that Kenneth Gainwell price, which you might not even have to get him for a second. You might give him a player on your roster you don't like. Uh, maybe you have a lot of injuries. You feel like you're out of it. But to me, I'm pushing towards a strong buy for the running back out of Philadelphia in his rookie year, Kenneth Gainwell. What do you think? Yeah, I'm all over it. I'm all over it. I, I do love him as a player. The prospect profile fit. It all makes sense. And now the usage in week one. I mean, we're, we're excited when you get that usage in week eight, nine, ten. For a rookie that was a fifth round pick to be getting this much usage this early, clearly that's a win for him. Yeah, I recommend to all the nerd herd out there go out there and put some offers. Ken Gainwell, uh, another rookie who was not a fifth round pick, but the fifth overall pick, Jamar Chase, seven targets, five receptions, 101 yards, one touchdown, led the team in receptions, led the teams in yards. Now, obviously, T. Higgins got a little boo boo there, but for a player that we're all talking about, that we we're worried about, Coming the preseason, dropping everything, only had one reception the entire preseason, comes out and has an absolutely monster, fantastic first game with Joe Burrow. He had that sweet, huge, massive set. Was it 70 yards that touchdown? Yeah, yeah, uh, it was a massive play. I, I believe, which, which was a majority of his yards. Sure. But Jamar Chase looked really good. That report where Burrow was back. And as Burrow gets more confident and more healthy, and Chase gets more acclimated to the game, because remember, he hasn't played football in over a year as well. This could be an absolutely dynamic offense out there in Cincinnati when you throw Joe Mixon, Tyler Boyd, and T. Higgins in the mix. These are all massive dynasty assets. Jamar Chase, if there was ever a dip and you got in on it, looks like you looked out because Chase looked dynamic in Cincinnati. Yeah, he looked really good. We saw some of that that route running that he had that was you know one of his a solid attribute of his. We saw him play pretty physical, go up, and, and that was one of the things that I thought was – the best of from from his tape was he had very much so a my ball mentality. I think we're going to start to see that more and more on display as they as the the trust develops there. They're going to throw it to him even when maybe it's tighter coverage than some of the coverage he had this past week. He's going to even get more targets based on that. He's going to be a great player. Uh, this is this is a strong class. We always said the strength of this class is in its receivers, and I think that really showed already on week one for these rookies. Yeah, three dynamic showings from the three receivers, all finished in top 26, actually. Jamar Chase, Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddle, all finished in the top 26 of fantasy football receivers. Week one of their rookie year. Speaking of Devontae Smith, eight targets, six receptions, 71 yards, and a touchdown. Led the team in yards. Tied the team for uh, league lead in receptions. Devontae Smith 
looked absolutely beautiful out there in Philadelphia. Uh, my number one rookie receiver coming into this was outshone by Jamar Chase, but I am extremely excited for his future. He, We, we talked about uh, Kenneth Gainwell as a buy. Devontae Smith was a lower, I'd say in a majority of the community's eyes, Devontae Smith was more of the fifth, sixth, seventh pick in your rookie draft where we all three of us, you, Matt, and, and I had him as our number one overall rookie receiver, which might open a small window. I was looking in the dynasty, uh, the trade finder on the dynasty GM just before the show to see what he was really going for. And I saw some trades out there for, uh, for, I saw guys like, uh, where's Devonte Smith recent trades here. We saw Devonte Smith for a 23 first. Uh, I saw Devonte Smith for, uh, I just lost these trades in the trade finder. That sucks. But nonetheless, I'm buying. I'm buying Devonte Smith already. That I am as I'm as sure as sure can be on Devonte Smith of how his game is going to translate to the NFL and what he'll produce as a receiver. I think he'll have years where he'll finish as a wide receiver one, and I think he'll be a safe floor as a wide receiver two for the next eight to ten years. Gary, I think this kid is locked in as dynasty gold. Uh, I don't think there's a price that really scares me away outside of, you know, somebody's like, Hey, I'll give you Devonte Smith, Rich, if you love him so much, give me your 22 first and your 23 first. And I'm a mid, say I'm a mid range team to, and that obviously this is a non super flex, a one QB art league. Somebody, if somebody wants to Devonte Smith, uh, two first for Devonte Smith and that can get it done. I'm paying that all day, every day yep. and twice on football Sunday. Um, I'm hundred percent. What's up? I, I pulled it up. I pulled it up. All right, let's I, hear it. I pulled up the trade browser. So here's a couple. Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddle for CeeDee Lamb. Spicy. That's an interesting trade. Um, That's a one QB league? No, the, yeah, these are one QB PPR. Yeah, I'll take Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddle. Okay. Uh, Mike Williams and Devontae Smith. Oh, this is easy. For Marvin Jones. Don't even know why I brought that up. Ignore I that. saw that trade in there. I didn't even. Yeah, that trade's terrible. Whoever did that <laughs> trade, it's got to be Marvin Jones' cousin or his son in like in a dynasty league or something wow. going on there. Something's fishy, and Devon- it doesn't even sound even good fish. Devontae Smith in a twenty-two first for AJ Brown. Ooh, ooh. I don't love the twenty-two class, but that's close. That's really close. Yeah. All right. That's all you're getting from me. Okay. But yeah, I mean, I, uh, there's probably not a huge amount of trades for somebody that just gets drafted in the first right. round here of your draft. So you don't see a lot of trades in the trade finder form because nobody's going out there and trading them week one. But I'm buy- again, I'm buying. If you own them, God bless you. If you don't, good luck buying them. But it doesn't hurt to throw two first out there. I, I'm a 100% like buying. There's a reason that he was all three of our number one receiver in the class. And the thing that I loved is his week felt very... Um, it's something that he could replicate very easily. You know, it wasn't like one big spectacular play. It wasn't this unreal, unheard of catch. It wasn't, you know, uh, DB falling down. So he made a play like it was, he beat, he beat his, his the, the defensive back on good route running, using his speed, got open, made good catches. Like, and I just think that this is the, the stat line that we could see every single week out of Devonte yep. Smith. And it would not surprise me. Oh, another 80 yards and a touchdown this week. Oh, got another eight catches this week. Got, like These are all things that we could see very regularly out of a guy like Devonta Smith. And it, which will which will be like uh, you're going to get sprinkled in some monster games sure. there too. Like those those 11 catches for 170 yards and two touchdown games. And that's what I love about players like Devonta Smith, right? And this is, why, this is why I'm all in as a buy and give it a multiple first is because He's to me, he's a super safe dynasty player. Yeah. Where you mentioned six receptions, 70 yards. He gets a touchdown this week. Obviously, he's not going to get 17 touchdowns. Uh, but somebody's going to come in here and give you double digit points week in, week out. The best ability is availability. And the best kind of asset that you give on your team, say for your wide receiver two on your team, is somebody that's going to give you consistent points that are double digit. Every single week. I think that's exactly what Devontae brings to the table for the Eagles as their number one receiver now and for the future. I think he's an absolutely dynamic dynasty asset for any team, any format. Get him on here. Uh, I'll be updating my rankings tonight, uh, or if not, first thing in the morning. And I think I'm going to get Devontae Smith a pretty significant bump 
and where I have them in my overall dynasty rankings. He got a nice so bump. I'm excited. I, I was working on the contender rankings uh, for the the page uh, today, and he got a nice bump overall in the rest of season, which is our contender rankings. He got a nice bump there as well. And yeah, I and I also love as a quick side note, I love what this did for Jalen Rager. Jalen Rager also had six catches, sixty yards, and a touchdown, and he gets to play more of that number two role, the more a gadget, a low A dot you know, big speed stuff. Like he's getting to be used in a better way than a true X receiver, which is going to be the Devonta Smith role. So I really like this one, two punch. And I think they're both going to feed off of each other very well. So I'm excited about the future that, that Philadelphia has. Absolutely. Some great weapons out there, including uh, the great tight end Dallas Goddard. Uh, hopefully it opens things up for Miles Sanders. Elijah Moore, four targets, one receptions, minus three yards. Nothing to get overly worried about there. Obviously, Zach Wilson looked better the second half than the first half. And kind of like the guys come up to ACL. Elijah Mitchell, he's been hurt the last couple of weeks, wasn't really involved in those preseason games. Coming back from that injury, they're going to work him in there. I still love Elijah Moore's future. Yeah. Getting to Jalen Waddle for the Miami Dolphins. Six targets, four receptions, 61 yards, and a touchdown. Wide receiver, 26 on the week. Now, you heard that trade before uh, of Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddle for CeeDee Lamb. I said I would take the Waddle side and Devontae Smith because Jalen Waddle, he only had four catches for 61 yards, but he looks like he's going to be a problem. He looks like he's going to be a weapon in the NFL. It looks like, you know, Devontae Parker had a nice game there too for Miami. Uh, as Miami grows, as Tua grows in this offense, I think Jalen Waddle is going to be, if there's any, again, if there's another buying window for him. I'm all in on all these guys. I'm still all in on Elijah Moore. Oh, yeah. But Jalen Waddle. Devontae Smith, Jamar Chase, our top three receivers in this draft all look like the top three receivers in our draft week one of the season. And Jalen Waddle, where he didn't produce, still wide receiver 26 on the, on, the, on, the, on the week. The touchdown helps a ton, which gives him over that 14 points, got him to 16.1 points. It's how he looked in the game during his receptions. He looked strong. He looked fast. He looked crisp. I cannot wait to see him grow as he's somebody just – He's always a, a step away from breaking one off to the house. Yep. And he's that guy and the guy that's going to bring in the, kind of like Deshaun Jackson in his prime, right? Chris Johnson in his prime where every every other week, up oh, there's that 80-yard run. Up, oh, that's that 70-yard run for a touchdown. I think Jalen Waddle's touchdown uh, floor will be higher than most receivers purely based on his speed and how dynamic he is. I love Jalen Waddle this week, and I love him for the future. Yeah, Jalen Waddle looked really good. I think you know that chemistry with Tua is still there, even though there's been a year since they've played together. He was looking for him early and often. Uh, Will Fuller did miss this game, so it'll be interesting to see what happens when Will Fuller's inserted back into the mix. But even then, I think Jalen Waddle is going to be uh, the, the most heavily targeted player on this team long-term, maybe not this season, but long-term. He's the number one asset in this receiving core. So I'm I'm all for Jalen Waddle. And even the next guy uh, that we're going to talk about, Rondell Moore. Uh, yes, he real, did. Real quick before we get to Rondell. I'm sorry to cut you You're off good. before we get to Rondell because I want to hear your Rondell take here too. But uh, we mentioned the two firsts for Devontae Smith, mm -hmm. right? And that, that might not get it done. I bet two firsts would get it done for Jalen Waddle. I if you're a contender, I think it would too. If you're a contender, right? Like, Say you finished in tenth place last year, ninth place last year. Right now, today, would you give up two firsts for Jalen Waddle? Because I would. I don't think I would. I've always, you've always been a little bit higher on Waddle than I've been. Okay. I think he's good. I, I do think he's a very good player. Uh, I tend to lean more towards those guys that are going to be, you know, very consistent. Uh, your more traditional X receivers. Like I tend to lean that direction overall. Not. It's not across the board, but Devontae Smith is a traditional X receiver. Well, he's going to play the X role. So he's, okay, well, he, he might not weigh as much as a traditional X receiver. Listen, but. The X Men's a very large group. There's room for everybody. And there's definitely word, room for Jalen Waddle. Let me hear, let me hear your take on Rondale Moore. Yeah, Rondale Moore. I was very pleasantly surprised to see how much he was involved week one because his snap share wasn't huge, but literally every time he was on the field, it looked like they were trying to get him the ball. Uh, in fact, it was on roughly 36% of his snaps that he was being targeted. So that was one of the highest in the league. 
when he was on the field, they wanted to get the ball in his hands. Already had four receptions for 68 yards uh, on five targets. The one target that he didn't uh, convert on was one in the end zone. So he could have also been part of this club with the 60 plus yards and a touchdown joining the other guys. But I'm excited about how they're getting him involved. Obviously, it's going to be DeAndre Hopkins offense for the foreseeable future. But this offense has been missing that slot receiver to make plays. We saw even Christian Kirk making plays out there. Not the biggest Kirk fan. He always has two games a year where he has a big game with multiple touchdowns, and then you don't see much for the rest of the season. I think Rondell Moore is going to be the number two in this offense, and they're going to figure out how to get him the ball in a variety of manners. And so I'm excited about his future for the Arizona Cardinals. 100% A hundred percent agree with you. With everything you said there on Rondale. Uh, same thing about Terrace Marshall for the Carolina Panthers. Six targets, three receptions, twenty six yards. Out targeted Robbie Anderson, who they just paid that big yeah, uh, that extension surprising. to. Uh, so I remember somebody t- when that extension went down, they're like, "Hey, does this change your uh, stance on Terrace Marshall with this extension?" I was like, "Absolutely not." Uh, the reason they'll get out from under that contract will be because of Terrace Marshall. Uh, and he showed he's, he could be a force already week one, seeing the six targets. Obviously, they didn't do much to it, but again, it's a target share. He out-targeted Robbie Anderson. Same Kyle Pitts. He didn't have a big game. Eight targets, four receptions, 31 yards. Uh, the, the whole offense kind of just looked eh out there. Uh, but still, eight targets, four receptions, 31 yards. Eight so targets is a get lot. Onto. Eight targets it's is a lot. It's a lot of targets. Yeah. Nothing to be worried about. All right, before we move on to our next segment, let me tell you about my friends at my bookie. Now, listen, guys, gals, we all love Dynasty Fantasy Football. We all love that action. And there is no better place to get some great action than my bookie. If you like easy money, thanks to my bookie and their lock of the season, if either team scores an NFL that season Oprah they had, then you would have won. They offer so many great things out there for my bookie, every kind of bet that you want to make. And right now they're offering a great promo. If you head to mybookie.ag today and use that promo code nerds and instantly receive double your first deposit. That's double your funds to double your winnings. Again, that's promo code nerds to receive double your first deposit. None of this, hey, you play 10 bucks here, we'll give you a dollar. Pay 10 bucks here, give you a dollar. No, they're going to instantly double up your money. And my bookie offers so much more than just lines. They offer prop bets. They offer season long betting. They offer everything that you want that you'd expect when you go to your regular casino or sports book you get all that action at my bookie it's my favorite place to win mucho mucho bucks i mean i thought honestly garrett on thursday that line where i saw dallas get an eight okay i was on my bookie and i was pounding there you that go. negative that, that eight and i came away very 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 nice um what other bet did i make on my bookie this week let me i was up i was up uh, uh i was up a, a good amount of credits as we get on my bookie because I absolutely love their site. If you're gonna if you're gonna play some wagers, again, DFS is fun, right? It's fun because everybody feels like they're gonna win. But no one wins the DFS bets, the pros do. Get out there, use your football knowledge. Again, we play Dynasty because we are immersed into the game. When you're immersed into the game, uh obviously it's still 50-50, but I feel like I have a slight edge. And I'm in this I'm in these betting leagues and I always do pretty well. I'm not some professional gambler and I'm not betting my house, but by my bookie provides me an opportunity to get a little bit extra cash. So when my wife complains about how many uh dynasty leagues I'm in, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at all this cash I got from my bookie. Promo code nerds. Make your wife or husband Calm down a little too. Rich, you know a player that is just way too cheap uh, on Prediction Strike right now? Mr. TJ Hawkinson. You can get a share of TJ Hawkinson for just $1.03. Wait, you shut your dirty mouth. I'm dead serious. $1.03 to get yourself some TJ Hawkinson. And that's exactly what you get to do over at PredictionStrike.com. It's basically a stock market for athletes. Buy TJ Hawkinson right now. Get TJ Hawkinson. You can go over there. You can buy, sell, hold stocks and shares of players just like that. Best of all, if you sign up with the promo code DYNASTY, you receive a free share. So that you don't even have to worry about that $1.03. Or you're like, you know what? Since it's free, I'm going to try to get somebody that might be a little more costly that is going up. Maybe like Amari Cooper after this week. 
$9.09. That's an expensive stock, but hey, it's free. So I'm going to get it. That's what you can do over at predictionstrike.com. Use that promo code DYNASTY to receive a share, a free share of your first of a player with your first deposit of $20 or more over at predictionstrike.com. Yeah, I'm literally buying uh, TJ Hawkinson as we speak. <laughs> get all of them. I'm literally going to, there's not a doubt in my mind, I'm going to at least triple up my money. Well, not that my mind. I, I I truly don't understand how he's so inexpensive because Dalton Schultz is over three dollars. So if I can get Dalton Sch- or I can get three TJ Hawkinsons for a Dalton Schultz, done and done. Yeah, I, I'm literally I, like I'm thinking about like I'm literally thinking about depositing more money here just so I can get uh, more, more TJ uh, Hawkinson Hawkinson shares. Yeah. Well, while you're at yeah, it, go get your to- boy uh, Corey Davis too. He's only a dollar fifty six. I have to put my phone down. I'm a, I'm <laughs> going to be depositing more money into this. Uh, I mean, I have all I have all my wins from my bookie, so why not? Yeah, it's just money. just I'm head right on over there. All right, Garrett, why don't you lead us into our last segment of the show? Yeah, so we're going to do something called Week One Hype or Right. So I'm going to give you a statement about a player or a situation. You're telling me if that's too much hype for the Week One over hype, or is that actually correct? Is that right? Is that what we're going to see moving forward, all right? All right, let's go with the first one here. The Aaron Rodgers drama will cause the team to sputter moving forward. Is that too much hype, or is that right? Oh, that's way too much hype. Way too much uh, hype. Uh, I mean, he's getting hit in the junk out there, causing him throwing interceptions in the red zone, which you know I understand. You know, that's, that's a painful situation to be in. Uh, it just everybody has a bad game. You know what I mean? I get the last the the one number one thing I'm not doing is overreacting to week one. I still want Aaron Rodgers. I still want Devontae Adams. I still want Robert Tunyon. I still want Aaron Jones. These are all high valuable dynasty assets on my team. I think this is just a, a, a week one uh hiccup. And uh yeah, I'm not buying it. So you think he's back to MVP level next week? I don't believe he's gonna win MVP this year. Uh I think that's gonna be Justin Herbert, but uh, <laughs> okay. We'll, Baker we'll Mayfield. Come on. I'm just kidding. It is going to be Baker Mayfield. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think he's going to be just fine. Okay. Honestly, he's just too good. All right, let's go to our next one here. Now, originally these were these were hot takes of mine. Simply just a week ago, these seem much less hot after the week one action. Dak is the QB one overall, and both CD and Amari are wide receiver ones. Is that hype? Or is that right? Oh, that's just right. That's so right. It feels good. It's like, wow. It's like, I, I believe in love at fight. First sight. It's so right. I. Uh, that's a lot of ites going on here. That is. Uh, obviously, <laughs> da- you know, I'm da- sorry Dak was on laugh. pace last year to throw the football for 7 million yards. Uh, this year, he's on pace to throw for 8 million yards. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, does anything look different to you where it says Dak does not look in line? If you had to pick one quarterback right now to be QB one a year, it's Dak easily. Amari Cooper, who when Dak played last year was a wide receiver one the entire time. He's done that consistently. C lamb was a wide receiver one with Dak. And honestly, in that game, C lamb had like three drop balls. And he still looked, put up a good uh, stat line. It was like three or four drop balls. So, I'm 100 percent in on this. I, uh, this offense looks like it's it's pedal to the metal with Kellen Moore, Moore calling plays. He was calling plays last year at this pace with Dak, and he's right out the gate doing the same exact thing. I think Dak will finish his QB one. I think Amari is going to finish as a top four fantasy receiver easily, and I think you'll see Ceedee Lamb right there at the back end of wide receiver ones too. If not, maybe right around nine. I'm all in on this take. Awesome. No, I'm I'm absolutely on board with this as well. And it is funny, even though it wasn't my hottest take, it's crazy to in one week for it to shift this much because if there was a week you were going to give Dak Prescott in this offense a break, it was this week. It was his first game back after a terrible injury. And they're going up against the Super Bowl champs that won the Super Bowl mostly because of how good their defense was. They made Patrick Mahomes look very, very mortal in the in the Super Bowl. So if there was a week where this was going to be like, ah, I don't know about the Cowboys offense this week, we'll see. It was absolutely in week one against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They came out guns blazing, and it's only going to get easier from here. So 
I'm all aboard Dak, CD, Amari. I even think better days are ahead for Ezekiel Elliott. I don't a hundred percent. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that he's going to necessarily be a top two or three running back, but he's. I still think he's going to be an RB one. He's going to get some opportunities on the goal line. He's going to catch more passes than he did this week. They just needed some extra help protecting Dak Prescott, and they knew the game plan was the Buccaneers are really strong right up the middle. Let's not run uh, Ezekiel straight up the gut. Yeah, you know that right ahead, Gary. They they needed help in pass protection there, and Zeke did it exemplary. Yep. Like, he did a very good job in pass protection. He actually got to the outside pretty well, um, getting to the outside there. It's just that defensive line is very stout, and the linebacking core is very good as well. It's hard for any running back to come out there and produce, and Zeke did exactly what he was asked to do. And he always put his team in a position to win the game, so I like Zeke as well. Awesome. Let's move on to our third hype or right here. Hype or right, Saquon Barkley will not be an RB1 in this offense, partly because we're not sure he's fully healthy. Uh, I'm not believing that hype. I, I think it's just one of those things I kind of mentioned back going back earlier in the show about ACL injuries. It's hard for anybody to come back and produce at a high level like the early week one. I think Saquon's not going to get into his groove to right around like week three, week four, right around there. He's going to need a couple weeks. This offensive line is absolutely terrible as well. Uh, not as bad as Pittsburgh, but still really bad. I think Saquon Barkley, uh, his value is really going to come in in the passing game, and that's where his value is really strong. So I think Saquon will finish as a running back one still. Uh, and I, th- I think he is healthy. He's just not at full go yet, which is kind of weird to say you're not full go. That means you're not 100% healthy. But uh, I think when you have those ACL injuries and, and you're a skill position player, like you need to get your foot in down just a little bit. Doesn't mean you're not healthy. It just means you're not up to speed. Is that, does that even make sense? No, no, it makes perfect sense. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm hyper right on this one. It's, it's very close for me. Uh, I tweeted out a while back that I did have some very legitimate concerns, similar to Najee Harris, uh, about this offensive line. I'm not sure how well it's going to produce. We saw it at the beginning of last year when against the Steelers, Saquon Barkley was getting hit in the backfield every single play, it seemed like. Andrew Thomas, I guess, did have a very good week overall. Uh, He posted one of his best games, according to PFF, that he's had in his career so far. So there is hope, uh, but I am a little nervous. There's, There's a lot of talent at running back right now. There's a lot of good players. And like we talked about in our our, uh, top 12 episode of running backs, there's going to be a couple good players that just miss the cut. If he starts off slow enough, that could be the thing that just puts him behind just enough where he just doesn't quite get it. But I do think you're right in the fact that he will get better as the season goes on, as that he, he he's more confident on the ACL and all of that. He will get better as the season goes on. So this might be a sneaky little buy low opportunity, but just know it might take a little bit for him to really get going. But come playoff time, I think he'll be the same Saquon that we've seen before. Yeah, we might be talking about him in the buy sell episode as early as next week sure. as a buy because there's going to, I feel like that window is going to open up here. And they do have Saquon. Washington next week, which is a very good defensive line. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. There might be another window here, which uh, the, 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 the pick and might be just right on Saquon. And yeah, it might blow up in your face, but the, the reward is so high because it is, it's a make or break year for any running back is a make or break year every single year. So we're going to see how it plays out. All right. Hype or right, Matt Ryan is washed and will screw over this offense. No, nah, that's too much hype. Uh, we're talking about a former MVP here. I don't think Matt Ryan's washed quite yet. Um, to be fair, I didn't really watch that game in depth. Uh, that's one of the games I kind of didn't have a chance to really get into by tonight, to watch in depth. Uh, but from what I did see on a casual basis, I mean, it's just it's week one again. I mean, are we saying Aaron Rodgers is washed? Because he had such a terrible game. I mean, guys scored. You know what I mean? Like, it's sure. it falls in that category. Let, let's give him another week. So I'm saying it's total hype. It's overreaction from week one. I think it is a little bit of an overreaction as well. So I will say hype. But I do, I am, I have one eyebrow raised at Matt Ryan. Uh, losing yeah. losing Julio Jones is a big loss. You do have that new coach in there. So there's just a lot of transition right now. Let's see how everything plays out. But he's also at the point, too, where, Atlanta, if this if this thing doesn't work out right, if they're not looking good by week six, week seven, to where they're in a position to make the playoffs, this thing could absolutely be blown up at some point, which one could argue it probably should have been before this, 
but I think they're yeah. right on the cusp of that. Yeah, I mean, let's see what Arthur Smith does. I mean, I'm just, I'd be more concerned if you had this question here, like we're concerned about like Ryan Tannehill in this new offensive coordinator who literally completely got away with, like I thought he was over the same offense and did not run any play action oh. almost at all, which is where Ryan Tannehill really dominated and Ryan Tannehill's little struggle because of it. Um, obviously having Chandler Jones in your face, literally every single play hurts too. But yeah, okay, on to the next one. All right, number five, hype or right, Joe Mixon will be a top five fantasy back this season. Yeah, lock that up is totally right. Uh, it, it, I, I'm all in on this Joe Mixon trade if he can stay healthy this year. I, I, that offensive line will get a little bit better as the season goes along. It did not play horrendous whatsoever this past week. We mentioned those three receivers already, and as Joe Burrow gets more comfortable, you're not going to be able to stack the backs for him. And the biggest reason where I'm so right on this, Garrett, is his usage in the passing yep. game. As we predicted, he was out there running way more routes, about 20% more than his regular uh, usage out there on the field. So his involvement, not only behind the, the, the backfield, running the ball between the tackles and outside the tackles, but his involvement in the passing game make him one of the most dynamic three-down backs in the league. And that usage in the passing game will propel him to a top-five season Go ahead and lock him up if he stays healthy as a top five fantasy running back on this season. I'm loving it, and I'm loving where this uh, dynasty uh, value is going for all these Bengals. Uh, I'm with you. I, I wasn't sure if you were going to be with me on this one, so I'm glad to hear you are because I'm saying right as well. I love what I'm seeing out of this offense. I thought this was another team that would start slow, and they did not at all. They came out looking good. And originally, I felt that they had no business being in this game with the, the Vikings. The Vikings were a borderline playoff team last year, and they had lost huge pieces of their defense all year. All of those guys were back. They're all healthy. They're all ready to go. This should have been a defense that feasted on this poor offensive line and these young players in this offense, and that is not at all what happened. Bengals take them to overtime and end up winning this game. Joe Mixon with 29 rush attempts. I get it. It's overtime. You get a little boost because of that. But still, he got a ton of work there. Four receptions on top of that. I love what I'm seeing there out of Mr. Joe Mixon. Yeah, Zach Taylor runs that up-tempo offense, so we're going to see a lot of that action going on. And I, I, I think it's only going to get better. I really do. I'm with you. All right, let's go to number six here. Jacksonville is far and away the worst team in football, and Urban won't last two years. Is that hype or right? Um... I think it's half hype. I don't think they're far and away the worst team in football because they're still the Houston Texans. That they lost to. I know. The te- I, I know and I know. And the Texans came out there. Terod looked really good. But as Trevor Lawrence, they still have Trevor Lawrence. And that alone makes them not the wor- worst than the Houston Texans. I'm sorry. Sure. It just doesn't. As Trevor Lawrence gets better, he looked good his first game. Um, Jacksonville will get better as well. The, do you have DJ Shark? They got LaVisca. They got James Robinson. Um I think Houston's the worst team in the NFL. Now, far and away. So when you say far and away the worst team, that's where – if you said, hey, they're the worst team right now, they just lost to Houston, that's a fact, sure. right? That's a fact right now. Will Urban last two years? He won't last two years. Uh, his his offense – I'm already – there's rumblings out of uh, Jacksonville already. Like, the assistant coaches have a problem with Urban Meyer already. It's week one. And they got a problem the way he's coaching and running this team. He will not last two years in the NFL, I, whether it's whether he says it's health reasons, whether he says it's because uh, the NFL game is just not for him. Goes to USC or is. USC. Uh, rumor already is that Eric Bieniemy is going to get that job. We'll see. That job opened That's up, so you never know. Yeah, we'll see. But, yeah, he's out of there in two years. Either he's fired or he's out, he quits, one of the two. Yeah, I'm, I'm very concerned about all of this. Uh, it was puzzling to me, you know, a rookie quarterback in his first game, against a team that should have a terrible rush defense. Why you didn't come out and run the football? I mean, we're talking about, what did James Robinson have? Five rush attempts on the game? Um, He helped himself a little bit with three catches for 29 yards, but your top back shouldn't have five rush attempts on the game. And I think Carlos Hyde had six. Now, James Robinson had more uh, total snaps, so you have that to lean on a little bit. But still, I don't care care who's the lead. You say it's Hyde or, or Robinson. You need to run the football and help your quarterback out a little bit. And uh, they, they just didn't do that. It was puzzling to me, the game plan there. And uh, I'm Dude, I'm worried about this team. 
I told you in my bold predictions that James Robinson would not be a top 24 running back. And you're like, oh my God, I can't believe it because you had him so high. And I was like, because I know it sounds stupid, but I said because of Urban, the way he's going to run it, that Carlos Hyde would be a thorn in his side. Um, The way the offense is going to run, he's not going to get as much opportunity as you thought he would. And he was not going to be a value. And I told everybody to sell James Robinson because I... Now, now, again, it's just week one, so I'm not saying that's fact. But that's exactly how I thought it was going to go. Sure. Like, for the year. That's why. I, so when you're like, oh, I can't believe it. Like, I have him this high and you have him so low. We're the complete opposite. That What we saw week one is I think we see more of that than we even want to. And he's going to heavily rely on Trevor Lawrence and not James Robinson. And he's going to use Carlos Hyde way more than we would like him to be used. We'll see. I think that would be a big mistake, but it would not shock me in the least. Uh, let's go to number six here. Jameis, famous Jameis Winston, is a top 10 fantasy quarterback. Is that hype or right? Uh, I'm telling you, it's, it, it, I'm saying it's right because I've been saying now for weeks that Jameis Winston's a buy in Superflex. Uh, I had him higher than you guys in our bold, our quarterback episode. I think I mentioned in our bold predictions episode as well that because uh, of Marcus Callaway uh, being so high, even though Marcus Callaway didn't have a great game. Jameis looks like that lace. Here's the thing. Jameis is still young. Sean Payton's a guru. And Jameis Winston looked good in the preseason, and he looked absolutely fantastic in week one. I think he's a great super flex buy. I am buying Jameis Winston. I will say after the season's over, if not before the season's over, Jameis Winston will see at least a three-year deal to stay in New Orleans. He's the, or he's the quarterback of the future. Michael Thomas will be coming back at some point in the season. I think the sky's the limit. I think Jameis Winston will finish as a top 10 fantasy football quarterback, and I am buying him in super flex leagues. If I can get Jameis Winston for a first anywhere, I'm giving that over with the biggest, cheesiest, I just got you over and bent you over that table with no lube uh, kind of grin on my face uh, all day, every day. I love it, and I think Jameis Winston's here to stay in New Orleans. I'm going to say hype, but barely. Uh, top 10's really difficult to do. and It is. And- it was a it was a weird game. The Packers just seem very disinterested in in playing football. They have a good secondary. They do have a good secondary. Alexander is one of the best corners in 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 football. But it's it was it was a weird game. He had five touchdowns, but he didn't cross like 150 yards. So it was like weird in that aspect too. I I am be, I'm a believer in Jameis Winston. I just don't know about top ten. Uh, hey, it's quarterback four right there now. There you go. All right, number eight. David Montgomery is the same back as he was at the end of last season and will finish as a top eight running back. Is that hype or is that right? I'm going to lean more right than hype because I think this is one of the biggest misses in all of Dynasty Fantasy Football from almost every single analyst out there. And honestly, I kind of felt this way in the offseason. Um, I made a trade where I traded away David Montgomery uh, for in a couple firsts for Zeke and Justin Herbert. And when I was done, I was like, man, I wonder if I should just kept David Montgomery. And that's been sitting bad with me for literally about five months now or so. And uh, I think we missed a boat on this. I think David Montgomery is one of those guys who's a very solid running back. Uh, looked really good for the Bears this week. Again, kind of where he picked off. Again, mm-hmm. viable in the passing game. Viable between the tackles. Three Cohen's hurt. I think top eight. That's a real hard mix to get into because obviously you have to stay healthy to do it like you did last year. But I think David Montgomery is, I think, let me put it this way. I think he ends up getting an extension to stay in Chicago. And I think he's a very underrated dynasty asset at the running back position. I would give up a first plus for David Montgomery. It's crazy how the tables have turned, but I lean more right than hype as well. I, I think we saw a big shift in his towards the end of last season. And the biggest question was, was it because of the lack of talent on the fantasy defenses that he was going against? Or was it because he had actually turned a corner? And the biggest things was he just looked so much more decisive. It looked like he really just, the game was too fast for him early on in his career. And he just wasn't processing everything quick enough. But now it seems like he's got to feel for the offense. He's got to feel for the speed of the NFL. And he's playing with much more confidence than he had ever played before. And when you can do it against the Rams, who have Aaron Donald in the middle of this defense, there's some other good key playmakers in the middle there, and you're still making plays, I'm leaning more right than hype as well. All right, number nine, we only have two left. 
Number nine, hype or right, Ronald Jones is borderline waiver wire fodder. Is that hype or right? I think it's right. I think anybody that gets excited about it, he was just named a starter again over uh, over Leonard Fournette. Gio Bernard was obviously the clear-cut passing down. He offers nothing in the passing game whatsoever. He's The fact that he's named a starter, again, opens another sell window. I hope he has a good game so everybody that has him can actually sell him again. Waiver wire. To, he, to me, he is, I think it's right. To me, he's borderline waiver wire fodder because I'm doing everything I can to get him off my roster. Obviously, you're not cutting him, but I think he offers no fancy value. because. What would you take in picks for him right now? I think you should be able to get a second for Ronald Jones. Would you take a third? I think you get a second for Ronald Jones, so no. But... I feel pretty firm that you can get Ronald Jones this week for a second from somebody that needs running back help. If it, if it came down to it, I could only get a third round pick and you push out the 2023, then I, that's what I could do. I could take it. It's so weird because you need running back help right. and he does offer that somewhat like he was just named a starter, right? Like, and he's going to have a couple games here and there. So a third, it feels like you're giving away for nothing, but a third's better than nothing at all. I would push hard for a second. I think if you wait after this week, because obviously it was benched because of that fumble. I think if you hold out after this week and get a second, I would push for a 23 second for Ronald Jones. If I had to take a third, I would take take a third because I would not want Ronald Jones on my roster. I think he's a terrible asset. I've been saying it literally since he was drafted Mm -hmm. in the second round. I've been, I've been saying he's a terrible dynasty asset and I still feel that way. I want nothing to do with him. I, I think if, if the second doesn't get it done, because I do think people are leery, uh, maybe pull the old, all right, I'll give you my third and Ronald Jones to get your second. Maybe that'll make it happen. All right, last but not least, yeah. the Monday Night Hero, Brian Edwards. Hype or right? Brian Edwards right now today is a top 30 receiver. Hype or right? I really like Brian Edwards a lot. He, he looked really good at the end of the game. I was really confused about how they were using the receivers that almost the whole the game. first three quarters, right? yeah. Like, no rugs. Edwards didn't exist until the end of the game. Had a couple targets there. Even Renfro there, but I still think he's, wasn't getting targeted. Yeah, I mean, they, they, tar- they target Darren Waller. Um, I'm going to say hype. I think he I think he has a talent. It's just, they're so weird. Gruden's so weird in Las Vegas. I don't know if he's going to get the targets enough to be there. He has a talent. It's real borderline for me, Gary. I think it's he's right there, but if it's more, I think, if anything, for this year right now and going forward, I'd put him closer to like 36, 34. You know, like sure. that low-end wide receiver three if it's there. Uh, if the touchdowns can go up, which again, you have Darren Waller. That really just right now, he's the offense flows through them until I see something different it's going to be hard just to be that wide receiver 36, 35, 34. So I'm going to say hype. Yeah. I, and I love the guy. And I, I think it has a high chance to change. Yeah. I, I'm going to say top 30 receiver is hype for this season, but dynasty value. I think that's about right. Is right around. Yeah. That that, top I could 30. live with that. So, all right, that wraps it up. All right. First, uh, first show is in the books. For week one, we're back week two. This is, again, this, this is our format. If you like it, uh, leave us a rating and review on iTunes. Haven't said that in a while. Shout out to Alex out there who said he loves the show, but there's too much rich and gave us a two-star review. Shout out to you, buddy. Nobody likes saying you love a show, like leaving a two, two-star two review. Uh, <laughs> but if you like the show, don't be like Alex and uh, leave a rating and review on iTunes. It really does help the show. because those That's what I learned as I mentioned, because those, those five-star reviews keep you at the top of the the fancy charts. It just, that's as simple as they are. That's why Apple has it. That's their, that's their algorithm, right? Like,